the Las Vegas Aces investigation ended this week. A lot of things that should have been put to bed, though, remain as mysterious as ever. I have fresh reporting from around the league, and we're going to break it down after hearing what Becky Hammond had to say to me about Derek Hamby. A very important lock on women's basketball starts now. Welcome to Wallet. For the win. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Meddahl, thanking you for making us your first listen every day. Of course, you can subscribe to us on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts, making sure that six days a week you are getting all things women's basketball. And of course, it's not just me. It's the incredible team over at The Next. At thenexthoops.com, we have over 100 reported pieces every single month. So make sure you subscribe, especially now we're giving you 27% off in honor of the 27th WNBA season, thenextstoops.com. Go ahead and join us to support the women's basketball coverage we all need. And I am struck, of course, by what we have learned and what we are still yet to learn about the investigation of the Las Vegas Aces by the WNBA. Uh, It was concluded this week, the WNBA announcing that there were penalties assigned uh, for comments the lead determined that Becky Hammond had made to De'Erica Hamby, uh, who was with the Aces, uh, became pregnant and was traded to the Los Angeles Sparks. Uh, Becky was suspended for two games. Uh, for impermissible benefits. Uh, And again, in both these cases, the league did not specify what these comments or what these benefits were in a press release. Um, The aces were, uh, had to rescind their 2025 first round draft pick, uh, which is both significant and relatively speaking, not significant, depending on how you determine what significance is. And so we're going to talk about in segment one, the unanswered questions for everyone involved, from the lead to the aces, to the players association, to other teams. In segment two, we're going to talk about the consequences of what has happened so far. So First, I'm going to give you my exchange with Becky Hammond on Wednesday morning about what she said to De'Erica Hamby and how she feels about it. And then we're going to talk about it all. So this is Locked on Women's Basketball. I'm Howard Megdahl. Becky, thanks for the time. Um, Just a couple things on that. Um, The ACES statement said that uh, you guys hold yourselves to the highest professional standards and the facts presented, we presented were consistent with these standards. I'm wondering whether you believe anything that you said or did in conjunction with Derek Hamby fell short of those standards in your view. No, I don't. I don't think they fell short. Um, That's not how I recall the conversation going. Um, And there wasn't one player complaint in the last six, previous six months. Um, Nikki Fargus can attest to that. Not one person in her office complaining. There's not one uh, point or uh, statement that was reported to Nikki of anything but um, quite honestly compliments and and how they liked me being their coach. Um, So that's who I am. And anybody that knows me knows how I operate. And uh, so... It's unfortunate, you know, that that this is trades and stuff are part of the business. Um, they're not fun phone calls for me, um, especially, you know, like I, sometimes your greatest strength can be a great weakness. You know, my my greatest strength is probably my relationships with my players. Um, so we're a close knit group. Um, 
and I know they'll go to go to fight um, on the court or in any way we're a family atmosphere and uh, that's who we are. So no regrets and nothing you do different as it relates to Dierica, in other words. I handled Dierica with care from day one when she told me, and she knows that. And like I said, once I make the phone call that that the decision has been made to move her, you know, that's when everything kind of fell apart. Thank you, Coach. Howard Megdahl back with you at Locked On Women's Basketball. There wasn't a lot of remorse in that, was there? There wasn't a lot of taking responsibility. Becky spoke with media for about a half hour. The very tail end of it, she expressed that perhaps the Erica experienced it differently. Uh, uh, it is not yet reportable, specifically what Becky said. I will be the first to tell you when that changes. But it's notable that we don't know that that the lead did not release that information. And so let, let's talk about this a little bit. If and when that becomes public, will the lead be comfortable with a two-game suspension of Becky Hammond? I don't know. I don't know the answer. We've seen certainly plenty of instances in the past where leads have, without publicizing what happened, issued suspensions instead of doing them in concert and what's followed is when inevitably the details become public that the league has egg on its face over a thing the league didn't even originally do you know ray rice is probably the most vivid example of this but there have been plenty of instances of this and so that's going to be an interesting thing still to play out does it become public if it does, how will the lead look as a result of that? And the same is true, presumably, with the impermissible benefits. Um, I've spoken to front office figures around the lead, and to a person, you know, just to share a couple with you, one said, laughable, just as I expected. You know, another talked about the fact, well, so this is what it costs to pay people under the table, was what another front office person said. And you just can't help but think about if somebody goes to the Las Vegas Aces, as talented a roster as exists in this league, and said, you can pay your players less officially and pay them more in other ways. And in exchange, you're going to have to give up a first round draft pick in 2025. It's not a trade they'd think twice about. They'd do it in a second. Anybody would in this league. So that is striking. And what is equally striking is the extent to which even... What the league put forward as punishment, which, as I said, if you ask anyone around the league, was a win for the Aces. They did not accept it, take responsibility, anything. They put out a statement at 625 Eastern Time on Tuesday night. That reads, the Las Vegas Aces are deeply disappointed by the outcome of the WNBA investigation. We are committing we are committed to supporting all our players to the fullest extent allowed by the WNBA. Our actions have always been consistent with our responsibility to hold ourselves to the highest professional standards, and the facts we presented were consistent with these standards. The well-being of our players and their families has and will always be at the forefront of who we are. And went on the WNBA's determinations about Becky Hammond are inconsistent with what we know and love about her. Becky is a caring human being who forges close personal relationships with her players. Of course, none of that speaks to the specifics of what Becky Hammond had said or done with, as she continually called her, Hamby. Not the Erica, not the Erica Hamby, not 
full name or first name, the way she referred to her current players, but Hamby again and again. It was very telling to a lot of people I spoke to as well. So that's interesting for any number of reasons, right? As we're thinking about it. And then doubling down, as Becky did, largely saying there's nothing that I said from day one and Hamby knows that. It goes a long way toward not addressing or acknowledging or taking any sort of responsibility. And said, so, you know, Becky spoke repeatedly about the impact on her family, which we'll see if and when we learn more details about what was said, whether that was a tact that made a lot of sense. Now, we do have further information about how this investigation was conducted, and then we have some things that we don't know. Uh, one is we know there were 33 people, uh, contrary to what Becky Hammond said, uh, oddly, in the press conference yesterday, uh, Liz Cambage was not one of the 33. Uh, no Aces current players were among the 33. And the reason for that, I can reveal this here, uh, the lead determined that they wanted to talk to everyone involved in the direct conversations between Dierica Hamby and the Aces officials. They then left it to the Players Association and the Aces, whether there was any additional people to add to that list. And, and it, it was striking that, you know, Becky uh, repeatedly spoke about, well, they didn't talk to any of our players as if that was a failing of the investigation, but the Aces were given the opportunity to provide all of their players if they wanted, or any of their players if they wanted, and the Aces chose not to do so. So in a lot of ways, and lawyers I've spoken to about this say, you know, this was you know, clearly an attempt to sabotage the investigation to be able to then dispute the findings. So what that means going forward for all involved, we're going to get to in segment two. First, however, here to tell you about eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. So let's talk about who wasn't included here. The lead obviously needed to investigate, but I guess we must speak to the fact that had a widespread conspiracy been unearthed, what the lead would need to do as a result of that would be far more disruptive than what it did. The Las Vegas Aces are the defending champions. They are one of, on paper, the elite teams coming into 2023. I certainly have no reason to think they won't be. And had the lead determined that there had been widespread uh, abuse of the CBA rather than a limited investigation into just Diarica Hamby's allegations. Diarica, of course, no longer on the team. You know, where does that lead, right? Do you have to void contracts? How do you even do that? How do you declare people free agents a week before the season when everyone's cap space is spent? So how would that even work? These are complicated questions that, from the league's perspective, are probably best left unanswered. The Aces, presumably, if they had players who would be able to shed light 
and debunk these allegations, would have been all too happy to have those players talk to investigators. The fact that they didn't is significant. It does not prove anything and is a difficult thing to prove a negative in general. So we cannot take it as proof of a problem, but it is worthwhile to note that they passed on that opportunity. Especially, it just makes the talking point. Oh, they didn't talk to our players. Very silly, because that was the team's choice. The PA might have the most complicated fact of all, right? The PA's job is to get its players as well paid as possible. Period. The PA represents Sierra Hamby. The PA also represents every single player currently on the Las Vegas Aces. So that is a complicated place for the PA to be part of it. And it's interesting that the PA put out a statement that this punishment misses the mark. It seems very geared specifically on the way Derek DeHamby was treated personally, not the things that relate to potential impermissible benefits. But there are a couple other things here, right? And, and we, we have to address them because they're in the room. The reason why the Las Vegas Aces felt it was important to offer as much as possible to their players is because it is financially more beneficial for a WNBA team to win than it is possible for a WNBA team to spend under the current CBA. That's just a reality. That's just where we're at. That is why the New York Liberty were more than comfortable chartering flights in violation of the CBA. This is why the Aces are investing seven figures in Becky Hammond's salary, because there is value in having what they feel is the best coach on the floor to get them a championship. And by the way, it worked. Becky Hammond coached and that team won last year. There is money to spend. And as the players approach an opt-out date in 2025, and there is a new CBA potentially coming as a result of that, in conjunction with the time that ESPN's comically undervalued media rights deal comes to an end, we're about to see a sea change. But 2025 is a long way off, and it is here in May of 2023. When there is money to invest, when there is money to be made, you see it happen one way or the other. When people are underpaid, money flows in a different way. And the thing that I'm just going to flag here that everybody has to have on their radar is that there are gambling scandals all over American sports right now. There is an infusion of gambling scandals. And moreover, there are more and more places where it is possible to bet on WNBA games. And leave aside everything else. Leave aside that, as one WNBA front office put it to me, this is what it costs if we want to pay players the way the Aces did, according to the investigation. And that remaining unclear is a huge problem. The fact that the league had a deeply intensive investigation is good and important. And having a figure from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and from the, another from the Southern District of New York, that's great. Not releasing the full report the way, for instance, NWSL did, I think is something that the league will regret because that transparency is going to matter for everyone involved to prevent it from happening again, to keep other teams from jumping on board and doing the same, and to make it clear that the league took this as seriously as it clearly did, because the Las Vegas Aces are not going to accept that and are apparently very comfortable with 
disputing that, even contra the facts. So the lead probably should release this today, as soon as possible for everyone involved. But just putting it out there, if there's not an effort made on a broad base of of, of economic indicators to fix this. And Brianna Stewart, VP of the PA, tweeted about this last night. This is where you get more money. You can get more money through expansion fees. This is what Major League Soccer has done. This is what the National Women's Soccer League is doing as we speak. Without expansion and a new media rights deal, I worry about the gap between the profit margin in women's basketball and what players are getting paid. Not just because there is a moral imperative to pay women more, though there is that. But you have to worry about what the knock-on effects, the unintended consequences are of not doing that. So there's a lot that remains unsettled here, unresolved. More to come out more questions answered. And unfortunately, a, a shadow that I know the league hoped would subside by virtue of getting this out the week of the season. I, I don't agree with people who are upset about the timing of it, because to me, the allegations, we first reported it over at the next in February, and these things take time to do right. But I, I, I think full transparency benefits everyone involved. And I think there's a lot more to learn about what happens. And I, I think everyone, myself included, would love to go back to talking about the Las Vegas Aces, the remarkable basketball team I covered last year, we'll cover this year, who added Candace Parker and Alicia Clark to an already incredible base of talent. They're going to be a fascinating must-watch team all season but there are bigger issues at play here that need resolution and we're going to keep on covering them over at the next here at locked on women's basketball because sunlight is the best disinfectant and it makes for a better lead as a result of it well that's all the time we have for today we will of course be back with you tomorrow saturday as well make sure you're listening to us every day because that's what we bring you. Until then, I am Howard Magdal, wishing all of you a wonderful Thursday. Welcome to Wallet. For the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. 